Ja, det var Sve. Hallå, hallå. Hallå, bonjour. Wow. So I'm just watching a little bit of Dracula. Bringing yes. back old memories. On old me. memories, yes. So we're taking it to Ottawa in a few days, but uh, yes, 98, I believe, is when we created the work. At the time, it was a big thing because we did not have a contemporary full length. No, no, especially like that. So now, looking forward into the future for the ballet, you've got some very powerful female leads coming up this year. So was there a theme? Was there a reason for all this sort of uh, thinking? Well. It, it's a bit of both because obviously you don't want to be uh, uh, connected or forced into a position where it has to be based on a theme necessarily completely but at the same time you, you don't want to simply just put whatever you want on. So we created this theme uh, with, uh, with our people and, uh, and, and with the repertoire that we had at hand. So uh, we came up with uh, what we call Fearless, which four very strong female characters that, uh, that ultimately uh, vanquish uh, their, uh, their challenges. Yes, yeah, so, you know, everything from the romantic Romeo and Juliet to the light nutcracker, very strong Clara, very strong Juliet, and then there's the darker Handmaid's Tale, mm -hmm. which I want to talk about too. Women choreographers mm -hmm. today, mm -hmm. though they're coming to the forefront, mm -hmm. they still have a lot of catching up to do to their male counterpart. They absolutely have to, and we are happy to support. I mean, obviously, Lila York, who created Handmaid's Tale, mm -hmm. it was well before this, uh, this issue came to the fore. Uh, and, and before that, we had Princess and the, and the Goblin of Twyla Tharp, which, of course, also came well before uh, this, uh, this, this issue that uh, needs to be recognized. And I think we need to do more to support. I mean, obviously, this season, or this coming season, with Handmaid's Tale. And uh, we also have uh, Nina Menon, who created some of the portions of Nutcracker, and Galina Jordanova, who did much work with us as a choreographer and a stager for Swan Lake, for Sleeping Beauty, for Nutcracker. And of course, when you stage these works on a company such as the Royal Pig Ballet, you adapt, you change, and you create, essentially. Yes. Now, with the company here, Andre, Heading into the 78th season, um, 80 is just around the corner. Mm -hmm. You've spent close to 43 years mm -hmm. with the company as a dancer and now as artistic director. Mm -hmm. How have you seen, and you must, have, you must have seen great change, not only in the dancers and the choreography, but the way a ballet company runs? Oh my gosh, yes, there's, there's a sea change that has occurred slowly to a certain degree uh, when you were a dancer in the company and when I was a dancer a mixed repertoire ruled the day it was primarily mixed repertoire but uh, when I became artistic director and we did our first Dracula which was a big thing as I said uh, you know it wasn't common for smaller company to do full evening works so for uh, uh, for the next, since I've been artistic director, uh, we have uh, certainly programmed full-length works uh, and, and that's done very well for our, this coming season, which is our 79th season, we will be doing uh, a significant amount of full-length work, but also I still love mixed repertoire. So we're doing something with the, the Brother Landreth, uh, a, a, a group from Winnipeg, which is, has very strong connection and also we'll have a creation and also a work that we've done in our repertoire from the past so yeah but it has changed I mean yeah, I mean and touring for two months with a mixed repertoire I mean usually when you tour now it has to be a brand uh, so a recognizable name like Dracula was uh, Wizard of Oz which we're doing uh, next yeah. season these are works Peter Pan Moulin Rouge all of the works that you have to do so you have to adapt to this but at the same time create something of artistic quality and, and and innovation and that's what we have done with any and all of those works that we seek to do all the time. So I'm going to go back in time in the day of Arnold Spohr and when we were in the company and, and talking now about how you associate a role with a dancer and you know there was pr protocol principal dancer soloist and core um, the beauty of this company is that you know there's often times where a corps de ballet member could step into a soloist role or a principal role has that 
changed, Andre, or and what do you look for in an answer? Sophia Lee here is dancing the lead in Dracula. What mm -hmm. was it about Sophia, or is it something that you just graduate into? Well, there are two parts to your question. The first is the, that a corps de ballet will do a principal, and of course we've done this all along, and we still do this. It is, I certainly experienced this, you've experienced this in doing lead roles even in the corps de ballet. I was in the corps de ballet and I got to do the role of Romeo and, and or Mercutio on my off night. I did Mercutio <laughs> or Romeo. So it was, it was significantly. Uh, but what I look for in a person, it's not so much their ranking, but their ability to deliver at the highest level that we can offer to our audiences. And, 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 and this is a testing ground often. Like I look at uh, Sophia that started, I mean she joined our school, joined the Aspirant program, got into the company and slowly moved up from core, second soloist, first soloist and principal. And, and it's, it's the whole package that's important to me. It's, it's, it's the physical asset because it is a visual art form after all and you cannot deny this. Then after that is the uh, technical requirements because you know doing certain works require extreme uh, uh, technical control. And then of course the wrapped all of this within an artistic uh, true line. And that's what you want and that's how you know the cream rises to the top that way. And it's not to say that other people that are maybe not as as qualified physically, artistically or technically are not good dancer or at the, at the top of their game for themselves, mm -hmm. but some people have more of certain things than others. And that's how you rise within the organization. Mm -hmm. and as an artistic director, I mean, and not to say that every artistic director is like that, but you know how they're played in Hollywood is mm -hmm. very egotistical and evil. <laughs> <laughs> scary sometimes. Uh, yeah. And it, 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 it astounds me because it is so not the way I operate. I mean, you have to make difficult decisions at yeah. times that does uh, that does uh, affect people's lives to certain or their career. You know, everybody wanted to do Juliet when we first got uh, Romeo and Juliet. You know, every girl dreamed of doing this, but not every girl got to do it, and not every woman got a chance to be this or a gentleman to be uh, a Romeo or. Cucho or any of those parts. It's just the reality of the business, but it's the way you do it and the way you support people. Because it's for me, it's never a personal vendetta. And some directors perhaps are like that, or they have egos that uh, will not even fit this room here, and that's just the way they've always operated. But I, 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 I mean, I, you know, I learned from Arnold Spohr that way, who was not egotistical. He could be a difficult cookie. I'll, I'll, I'll give him that much. I mean, and you know. And then he was very strict in some ways, but the one I learned the most that way was Rudy Van Danzig, who was the choreographer of Roman Juliet, who really inspired me to, uh, to, to be a, a, an open person and a supportive person. And also Henny Jurians, mm -hmm. who was the director for only a, f a few short months. But he always taught me, rather than you being at the top and screaming to rise you to their level, that he says you want to be underneath people. And, push them up to their level. So it's a more uh, empathetic, supportive aspect. And do you think your experience of having been a student here, struggling to make it into the company and going through the ranks, has that given you strength too into the job that you now have held for almost 25 years? Oh, I, absolutely. I, I, you know, because there are no school for artistic directors, and you know, there's always this thing: an artistic or somebody is just, you know, woolly-headed in the studios all day and, and not have anything else to do. But it's so far from the truth. I mean, I love being in the studio. I can't be there enough, unfortunately, but that's just the reality. But certainly, my experience within the uh, growing through the school and the company, and then being the associate artistic director, certainly gave me an an asset that I don't know that uh, an ex somebody from the exterior would have been able to uh, as easily adapt. Not, and it's not to say it's not possible. I mean, certainly after Arnold stepped down, there was Henny and then there was John and there was William, three uh, gentlemen that uh, took over the company for a sh brief period. But uh, certainly I have been there a bit longer. And so what is the love affair between you and the Royal Winnipeg Ballet? 
I don't know, you know, I wonder if it comes from Arnold a little bit, Arnold Spohr, who, who is really dedicated. I mean, I say to people, and say, how are you today? I say, I'm living the dream. Because it is a dream at the same time, you know, I love doing the work. I, I, it is a challenge. There are always fires put out. I'm a bit of a fireman in many ways. There are always issues, you know, and, and as you get for, you know, if the world never changed and we stayed the way we were, let's say, 20 years ago or even 30 years ago and I just continue, it would be great. But but you have to adapt to the new reality, an ever-changing and more rapidly so reality. But I, I, I am still inspired by the artists and, and the work. I Like I was looking at Dracula the other day, I say, how clever, how so well done it was, you know. And at the time it was a big risk, but it was one I was willing to take because I knew we, we had to go somewhere else than just continue doing mixed repertoire against the better judgment of just about everybody else said, no, no, the RWB has no business in the full-length business, <laughs> those kind of things. And look at them today, I mean, of course, they, they would be so puny people, in my opinion, uh, and, and I know who they are. <laughs> well, we won't mention that. No, it'll be in my book. <laughs> but obviously, Dracula, a turning point for you in your career, but what are there, are there some particular moments, I mean, even when you were dancing? that you still hold true to your heart? Oh yeah, I mean, I, it's funny, we were talking about the ecstasy of Rita Jo, which is a work that you did also, but I got a chance to do the role of Jamie Paul in it. Uh, and, and, you know, and of course, I don't have an indigenous background, but it certainly put me much closer to the indigenous reality that uh, I had ever dreamt it could happen to me. And, or, or when we did Going Home Star uh, uh, five years ago, or three years ago, I guess, for a 75th, you know? It, it's just uh, some of those roles are really important to me. I mean, I, I, I did not dance in Going Home Star, but Rita Joe, I did. And that's what opened my heart to Going Home Star, actually. I don't know that I would have had the same response to it when uh, the indigenous community came to us to ask mm -hmm. to do a, a, a work based on the truth and reconciliation finding. So in that sense, it was it was positive. But yeah, I have so, I mean, I loved when I was chosen to do uh, Mercutio or Romeo and Romeo and Juliet or Four Last Songs mm -hmm. or uh, Adagio Hamuclavir and some of those really powerful works. But what I'm the most proud of as, as, a, as an artist is having been part of this incredible organization. And now as this artistic director, I've brought so many works that I think have permanence, mean that uh, they will be around. Mm -hmm. I mean, I look at Dracula, 20 years later, we're still performing to sold out houses. Ottawa is sold out or in near capacity, I was told. Uh, you know, that's a significant uh, uh, accomplishment, achievement, if you will, for, for the Royal Pig Ballet. And we have many other works that continue to have uh, sustainability today. And, you know, and that's because we adapted to the world we were living in. If I had continued being a mixed repertoire organization, uh, which I want to continue, but I have to do in a certain measured way rather than just, I mean, you remember in your days, we did only mixed rep. Some years we did, we, we did not have Nutcracker. It was mixed repertoire for the entire season from on tour in Winnipeg. Uh, any project was a mixed repertoire. Yes. Which three or four small works. Oh, I know. Well, just watching this rehearsal definitely brings back memories, but... Uh, so, Andre, I want to ask one last question. If you weren't a dancer, what would you be today? Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I would be. Well, truly a, a dream come true, a dream yeah. job, and we thank you. It's the music. <laughs> I know.